Hello traders and welcome to Trading with Bill Options and Forex. December 9th, 2015, hump day on Wednesday. Coming to you live from Thai Thailand. White, blue, sunny skies, white sandy beaches. Absolutely cool and beautiful today. I have to tell you, it is gorgeous. I think we wait like more year for days like today. Unbelievable. Remember, we're here to help you losing trades become winning trades. We do that as a group. We do it together. The only difference is I'm behind the microphone and you all just write into me and tell me what you want, what you need, and we'll take care of it. Traders, uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. Got some forex, some options, and all that good stuff. So let's get started and let me introduce myself to you. My name is William Gilday, and yes, they do call me Bill. Traders, I started trading in the year of 2006. In 2008, I retired from a wonderful 27 year career as a firefighter paramedic out of the great state of Florida. Nine days later, I came to Thailand for a three month holiday. Well, I'm in my eighth year and I'm still in Asia. Love in Thailand and just having a great time trading Forex and options. I started trading Forex first, by the way. I've only been trading options about two years and uh, having a great time. I'm going to catch up on what we've done so far and we'll uh, take a look at that later in the presentation. Trades where I trade is I look at fundamentals. I don't trade the numbers, I trade the results of the numbers. So, in other words, numbers will come out and I might trade maybe 40 minutes after the numbers come out. And if everything lines up, in other words, it's in the trend, it's in my direction, we've got some, we don't have any blocks in the way, you know, everything lines up, um, I'll be more than happy to enter the trade uh, after the numbers are released. It may even wait for a little pullback and then continuation, right? So, and, but, Really, I'm a technician. I love looking at charts. I love looking at price action. I use a lot of tools. I, um, I use Fibonacci all the time. I use pivot points. I do use harmonics, and I do use Ikimuku clouds, depending on what instrument I use. I change, um, depending if I'm trading Forex, if I'm trading options, and what platform I'm using. I, I really don't like not trading the platform that I can trade off of. So I, I like to be trading... Um, I like to be able to trade off the platform that I'm using. I don't want to have to go back and forth to 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 enter um, my trades, even even if it's a limit order. I don't like having to go back and forth. I like doing everything on one screen and you know on one chart and and do everything from there. And it just makes it so much easier, right? And uh, that's the whole thing about uh, trading is you know make it make it simple for yourself. You know it's not easy. If every, if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it. We'd all be billionaires, right? Trading's not easy. It's a lot of work. But it's a lot of fun, and I totally enjoy it. All right, let's get the legal stuff out of the way. And this is our risk disclaimer. Forex and options trading has a large potential rewards, but also a large potential of risks. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the Forex and options markets. Most importantly, traders, please do not trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Traders, always remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, that's the legal stuff. Not that I think that anybody in the U.S. cares what I'm doing in Thailand, but it's the legal stuff, so we've got that out of the way. Today, I have commentary, and I um, I think it's really important that we sort of like air this out and, and get this out, and this way you don't feel like you're alone. We are coming into the holiday season, and we're coming into next week, we have the FOMC rate decision um, coming out a week from today, right? And, you know, that's going to be a big, big jerk, right? If they, they're going to raise interest rates. I mean, we, we pretty much know they're going to raise interest rates. The question is, how is the market going to react to raising of the interest rates? Fortunately, they do that at 1,400 hours on Wall Street and that's 2 a.m. in the morning for me so I won't be around to see it and I will not be trading it. There'll be no pending orders in, there'll be nothing. Um, and then, you know, 10 days after that, 8 days after that, we are into a holiday season. We're into Christmas and New Year's and you know the markets basically soak up from there. So we get very slow and price action gets very slow. And I'm going to show you a lot of charts today showing you how the markets have really just clamped up and just there's no price action. Now, if you go to the exotic bears, like the pound Aussie or um, 
the Ozzy Corona or something. You know, if you go into some of these exotic pairs, you can find some price action. Or you can always find price action. There's 42 currency pairs out there. You can find one that has some price action and trade it. I don't recommend that. In fact, I'm out of all of my Forex positions, and I have one options position left, and I'll show you that today. And I hope to be out of that tomorrow, um, win, lose, or draw. And we are finished as far as the year goes. The rest of the year, I will be scalping. In other words, I'm only going to go for 5 pips, 10 pips, 12 pips, and I'm going to get out. And we're not going to stay in trades very long. Um because the market's going to soak up and any little thing can move the markets and, and just have to be careful of that. My recommendation is put your scalp hat on. If you're not good at scalping or you don't like scalping, you know what? Use a demo account. The only important thing about using a demo account is treat it as it's your real account. So if you, you, know, you trade five mini lots on your demo account, you trade five mini lots and do everything the same that you do on your real account and just trade it. And you know what? On January 3rd, um, one, two, three, on January 4th, which is a Monday, you know, we're back to full trading, full steam ahead, and we can get back in and we have everything on track. We can go back to it. But this happens every year. We got cut short two weeks because of the FOMC situation, and there's nothing we can do about it, traders, except protect ourselves. Remember, what is the goal of our trading? Capital preservation. So we want to protect our capital preservation. That is so, so important, right? So that is what is going on, my friends. I just thought I'd talk about that a little bit. And as far as I'm concerned, we are really scaling back. This brings me to my next point. My next point is as far as videos go, I don't think I'm going to be doing a video every day. I need to have double eye surgery. In other words, both lenses and both my eyes need to be replaced. So I will be in the hospital at some time in the next... Well, I really don't know. Tentatively, it's the 24th of December. I'm trying to get it moved up earlier, but tentatively, I'm in the hospital on the 24th of December, which won't affect anything because well, we'll be closed. The markets will be closed, so it won't affect anybody or anything. However, it does move up earlier. It will affect it. Also, I'm not going to put videos on if there's no price action. If there's nothing going on, there won't be a video, okay? So don't expect a video every day. I'll try to get a video out if we have something to talk about. But as you're going to see today, there's very little price action moving. Alrighty? Alright. And I wish you all a very happy holiday season. And please be safe. You know, if you're drinking, please don't drive. And if you're drinking, just be careful. And if you're not drinking, be careful. Um, just be careful. Enjoy your holiday season wherever you are in the world. And of course, we always are looking forward to a new year and a lot of excitement and a lot of profits, right? That's what it's all about. All right, that's enough commentary. Let's head on over to some Forex charts. Okay, so here's a New Zealand dollar. I want to show you this. This is pretty wild. This was the big announcement that came out. Uh, <laughs> that came out with um, Mario Draghi last week. And you can see how... Now, remember, harmonics patterns are reversal patterns, right? So this thing spikes all the way up, but then does come all the way back down. As you can see... Right of the chart, the two, well, like a double bottom there, comes right down just below our C point, and the trade eventually worked out. But you would have never had your stop way up here. Um, and if you would have entered this, you know, it, it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been a friendly thing because really you could have entered this on the second red candle, but you would have never had your stop up here, right? So you would have gotten stopped out on this. But just showing you that, you know, these patterns do work, and this is news, this is data. Right, this comes out in data, and bam, there we go. And who would have expected the euro to go through the roof, right? But it took the New Zealand with it, and it spiked it, and that's the way it is. But I wanted to show you a pattern that does, did work, and it was a nice bad pattern. But, however, look at price action now. Look at the last candle on the chart to the right, and look back. We are like in a 30-pip range, folks. There is nothing there. This is a one-hour chart. You know, 30, 40 pips we got on these candles. We're not moving at all. They're tiny little wimpy candles that are not doing very much. And that's just an example of what we got going on. So let's head over to the next one. And this is the pound. Now, this pound is in a very interesting area. This pound is very interesting. This is in a this is in a deep crab, and, and this this is getting ready, you know, if this decides to take the old dollar strength to the downside. 
we're in the PRZ zone. You know, we're we're ready to take this trade. The problem is, I don't want to be in front of that FOMC freight train that's coming down the track in six days and get hit by it, right? Un unfortunately, this is a beautiful, beautiful pattern to trade. I mean, we are just we're just doing great here, and you can go 15 pips above the PRZ, and you know, small small draw. Uh, draw down and away you go down you go and you know and take this like I said down to um, you know your sea level at 1.4960 and you know if you can get in at 1.5035 you know not a bad trade this 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 you know it's a 70 pip trade if you can get it but I don't know if I want to get it with no nothing's moving and there's really no data to Tomorrow, other than New Zealand had its as its rates announcement, which is 3 a.m. in Thailand, and it's 1,500 hours um, today for those of you in the United States on Wall Street. Okay, so the pound looks good to the downside. I really like the pattern. We'll see what happens. Uh, don't know if I'm going to get in it. We're going to watch very closely. Going to have to watch and see what's going on. All right, let's take a look at the euro yen. Now, this is pretty interesting. This is a 100 pip range here, okay? This is a 60 minute chart. This is a 100 pip range. The question is, where do you get in here, right? So I'm bearish in the euro yen, right? This, this, these blue candles are from data, but on the whole, this pair is bearish. So this would need to come back up to the top of the range and that's at 134.50, and then we just take it to the bottom of the range and get out. However, right at the moment, there's nothing to do, and I just want to point out that if you look at the last 12 hours, right, you know, even 15 hours, like nothing's happened. This has just been absolutely nothing going on here. There's just no price action where you can trade this. I'm not saying candles aren't moving, but definitely not something I want to trade. I don't want to jump into this. If it breaks out below the range, then it needs to retest it and then give us a bearish candlestick pattern. And then the problem is we're coming into the 13300 psychological level, which it's going to bounce off of. So I'd much rather it head back up to the 13450 and we'll sell it from there. Otherwise, we need to wait for it to break that 133.000 and then take it short from there, which very, it's very possible that can happen. Um, absolutely can happen because as far as your yen goes, I am definitely, definitely, definitely bearish on that. All right, let's take a look at this is a dollar cat. I, I brought this up because of uh, the oil situation, right? Oil is just dumped. Ignore the pattern because the, the pattern failed, right? The pattern failed. So, but when this pattern came about, this is a 60 minute chart. When this pattern came about, remember that this. This pattern was, um, you know, at when oil was at forty-six, forty-six dollars um, a barrel. Well, now we're at thirty-seven dollars a barrel, right? So, you know, well, <laughs> you know what happened to the cat? The cat got extremely weak because of this oil, and the dollar got strong, and away we went. Now they had their OPEC meeting. Really, to my knowledge, and I need to research it some more. Nothing's really happened, right? Nothing has really been accomplished. Iran is not agreeing with the Saudis on a cap on how much they're going to produce. They're going to still produce their, you know, one million barrels a day, and they're not willing to, you know, break that from that. And, you know, they're not, they're not playing the game with them so far. Now, I don't, I think the meeting is over, I'm, to be honest with you. I'm not 100% sure on that, but we'll see what happens. But this is, you know, this is a pattern that, that, went against us due to fundamentals. That's why fundamentals are important, right? This is all about oil, folks. This chart is all about oil. If there was nothing going on, let me tell you something. This would have been a working butterfly, and this would have worked out fine, okay? But this is all about fundamentals, and this is all about oil. So anytime you see anything about oil, just go to your dollar cad, okay? All right, let's take a look at this is the Euro dollar 60 minute. This is in a great spot. This is current chart. We are in a deep crab to the downside, to the bearish side. Not bad. i got to be honest with you. This is really not a bad trade, not a bad situation to be in. I wouldn't mind taking this to the short side uh, and just soaking this up and 
and away we go. So really there's nothing we can do here and we'll just wait and see, right? We'll just, uh, you know, I'd love to take this short because I'm bearish on the euro dollar, but the euro's done some funky stuff lately and really, you know, as far as your stop goes, it's, it's got to be, you got to put your stop up to that resistance, right? Just inside that resistance um, that I have up on the top of the chart there, you got to be up into there. You're going to have to put your stop. So you're going to have to put a pretty healthy stop in there. And, you know, you, you trade, you, you know, you want a two to one, right? You want a two to one risk to reward ratio at least. So preferably a three to one. So, yeah, we, we want this to come back up into the up into the good old resistance area and then sell it from there and take it down you know like the top of the PRZ plus about 10 pips and that'll put us at about well it's at 1.095 so you know about that area we're looking to you know is not a bad place but I think you have to put your stop above that I don't know I'm, I'm not jumping into this um, monster this is Especially with FOMC coming out. This is just too dangerous, folks. I'm really in the scout mode. I'm like, give me my 10 or 15 pips and, man, I'm done. Um, not willing to be in front of these freight trains with this data. You know, normally I'd be in this trade for one or two days and not at this situation here. All right, let's head over to some um, options. So I have one option pair that is in... Um, in play right now, um, really Expedia came around yesterday. Had a big red day on Expedia yesterday. We need another big red day today so I can get in profit. I'm um, only fifteen dollars in the negative on this trade. It would be wonderful if this would break down and give me like tomorrow like a fifty dollar profit. And on Thursday New York session, I can get out of this with profit. If it doesn't, I'm just going to get out of it wherever it's at because I'm I'm not going to risk this, right? Um, but remember, we've been in this Expedia for like five weeks. And remember, at one point, we were like at $175 in the negative. And this has come all the way back around. So, but I will be out of it by Thursday. Win, lose, or draw, we will be out of this trade tomorrow. Um, hopefully, we'll be in profit and we can get the heck out of there. So just wanted to show you that where we're at. This is the only trade I have open traders. There's no trade open on the Forex side or the option side except for Expedia. And that's the way I want it. Uh, going into the holidays flat. Nothing, nothing open. Let's take a look at some charts. And these are daily charts, okay? So here's crude, not to, you know, pound crude like crazy, but um, price currently is at 3809. Uh, you know, not too bad. It, it could bounce here. You know, it gave us uh, Doji on Tuesday, uh, on Monday, Tuesday, gave a notch up. The problem is we have, look at our moving averages. This is where moving averages gets important. You can see the moving averages is pointed to the downside. And you can see there's angle and separation between the 10 and the 21 moving average. And then the 55 is above that. And it all points to the downside. Our personal pivot point has a down arrow. Now, if you were to listen to that down arrow back then at 41.86, you would have did very well in this trade. So, what else do I want to look at? Well, if you look at the market DNA, folks, the market DNA has the blue line is what I'm interested in, and that is to the upside, and so is stochastics. Green to the upside. So, you know, just if you're trading oil, you know, this, and look at the volume yesterday. Those bars behind these candlestick prices, those are volume bars. And look at the volume yesterday in the market. Wow, unbelievable, huh? So, um, you know, if you're trading oil, you know, I'd look for a bump to the upside, but we've got some stumbling blocks. I'm not too worried about the 10 EMA as I am the 55 EMA. Um, and then the 21, which is right below it. So. These three lines above this candle I'm concerned about. The 55 is way out of whack there. That's at 43.35, so I'm not too worried about that. But the 10 is at 39.53, and the 55 is at 41.86. So just keep that in mind as, as you go through your trading today if you're trading oil. This is the ES. A lot of people trade the ES. Again, this is a daily chart. This is the E-mini S&P 500 Index Futures ET. 
H and you can see it's pretty much sideways um, but we've had three down days and now we are approaching the 55 EMA and it's held for three well one two three days it's touched it and was not able to break through it realize when a, when price action touches a 55 or any EMA or any price area and touches it you know several times that it eventually is going to weaken it's going to go through it you know that's what eventually will happen however we have conflicting stories on our indicators right our market DNA has a blue line to the upside and our stochastics is down to the downside um, and but to me that looks like that's ready to turn so pretty interesting chart here I wouldn't be trading this um, you know you'd have to be waiting like an hour maybe an hour and a half into New York to see if this is going to give you that up move um, but very interesting chart very very interesting I really like watching that stuff all right let's take a look at the dollar index this is the dollar index I just wanted to show the show you where that, we're at we're currently at 98.32 we've been hovering in this area for the last week and you know nothing new here um, again but look at that 55 EMA it's amazing how that 55 EMA works and price broke through it twice, couldn't hold, and is still above it. Uh, will price come down to that 97.98? That's the 55 EMA, and see if it can break through it, or are we going to get a bounce on the dollar? So it looks like dollar's going to maintain its strength. It looks like to me. I think it's. I think we're going to see this probably come down to the 55 and then bounce back up again. Um, so we'll see. And if you look back, you know, five days, you can see we have a personal pivots. Um, we have a down arrow. Wow, boy, if you would have taken that, huh? Boy, that would have been a sweet trade. But our market DNA and our stochastics are not in line with each other. I got a market DNA to the upside, and I got a stochastics to the downside. So sort of like indecision, like most everything out there, right? Everything's in indecision land. So that's what's going on. Traders, I have really gone over my time over 22 minutes. Can you believe it? Traders, on behalf of myself, William Gilday, and yes, they do call me Bill. I want to thank you for joining me today. Traders, be careful in your trading, please. Remember, Capital Preservation, use a demo account. This is really not a good time to be trading live unless you're scalping for 5 or 10 pips and get out. If it goes against you, get out quickly. Um, be careful right until the, until the 4th of January when we start fresh with the new year. And all this is behind us, FOMC, all this stuff and junk is behind us. So please be careful. Please visit my website at tradingwithbill.com and you can check out all my videos. And please follow me on Twitter at WKG1960. I do tweet quite a bit and my videos also are based on Twitter. Thanks a lot, traders. It's always great to be with you and I love doing this video for you guys and myself. I learn more from you. All right, traders, remember, trade safe. Trade smart and catch you next time. And of course, don't trade hard. <laughs> All right, Chase, take care. That's enough for me. We'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye bye.